Hello, there are currently more than 35 subjects in the Amnesty Software Engineering course and today in this video I'm going to discuss the subjects that I'm going to pick for myself and also hopefully this is able to help the people who are on the same boat as me as well. However, I'm not going to cover all of the 35 subjects too much but rather a subset of them and I've also timestamped the subjects in the video. If you have any interest on that, you can just skip through it. So if you have any interest in the subjects that I did not cover, please just DM me or just ping me or join Discord. I will just try to provide as much info as I can. So let's dive into the first one. I would pick the algorithmics, no questions. And for some people, you probably should skip this one, especially for those who already had the software engineering or computer science degree for the undergraduates, because this should be roughly the same as what you have learned during the days. But for me, I would do this again anyway, because mainly how I see algorithms is a lot different now. Back then, for algorithms, we, we just basically study it, memorizing it, and basically just use for the exams. But after a decade of working in the engineering environment, I started to appreciate those concepts of algorithms, and it is tremendously helpful in resolving some of the real life issues in the engineering. So therefore, yes, I would definitely pick this one up and I do not think this is as easy as the undergraduate one and I will make another video just to update on how the algorithms modules looks like in Oxford University. Object-oriented programming, yet another module where you are likely already had the experience back in the university days or in your professional environment. For myself, it is highly likely the course will be aiming at programming with TypeScript, which is my interest. You can argue that you can learn TypeScript a lot cheaper than paying £2,100 for Oxford University, but I just wanted to learn programming again in the university settings while you're having a face-to-face -face environment with my cohort so that I can you know, just know a lot more new people. But again, this is not for everyone, but you have the same interest as me, then yeah, this is for you. Database design. I'm 100% sure by this time, people will actually think that uh, what can you learn or benefit out of these modules, right? Well, I'm pretty sure that this subject is not as easy as what you think. I had two to three years of working in a business intelligence environment where reporting is always the priority one issues for the large enterprises and the business always wanted a solution that could provide the right data, the right time and the accuracy of the data as well. Sometimes the business would have a few petabytes of data sitting in the data warehouse and how do we as engineers efficiently design a complex yet resilient warehouse to support the business requirements. So most of the time it's not as simple as just provisioning a database and just code for the day. But with the right schema design, good relational data model and the very sophisticated query optimizations are all as important as you know just like algorithms in a software engineering world. And SQL is here to stay anyway. Having that experience will help a lot or tremendously in our IT career, right? And what I meant is, it's not just as simple as just select star table, but the complexity of data transformations that comes with, you know, with a good practices, structured data. This subject is an opposite of database design where it focuses on NoSQL, database door, just like AWS, DynamoDB or MongoDB even. The, the page of this subject is really helpful as you can see that it breaks down the full study week by days. As you can see, the first day we will learn the histories of XML and JSON, then we move on defining the structure of the schemas and then ending the week with querying and updating the XML database. In my cloud engineering career, having these skills is definitely really, really important, though I will question the need of XML nowadays, but XML is really important as most of the programming language actually depends on the structure of the data with JSON anyway. And you know, knowing JSON also comes with knowledge of YAML as well, so it's actually like, you know, it's a win-win in these situations. This subject is very likely to be a chill subject, based on my opinion, and I'm taking this mainly to act like a buffer tank. If another subject did badly, then I can use this to tank it, so I can bump my average up in case my other subject did bad. So it's oriented architectures. When I saw these subjects, I knew that I definitely will pick these subjects up. And you know, web services are increasingly important, especially the advance of cloud computing. And literally anyone with mobile phone is interacting with a piece of software or an application that's built on the service-oriented architectures, right? So it's also worth mentioning that apparently these modules require some certain of Java knowledge, so bear in mind that. And these modules or subjects are actually delivered by Paul Fremantle, who is the CTO and founder of WS42. He's also very kind to open source his teaching as well, where 
the materials you can find it under his github uh, where it contains all of the pdfs of the subjects cloud computing and big data another subject that is also delivered by paul and this is also one of my top picks for the subject because of the cloud computing having worked in this career for more than a decade now seeing any subjects that are related to cloud computing just excites me right these subjects give introduction of what is cloud computing while doing some practical exercise with mark reduce and python at the same time we also get to learn the theory of cloud computing you would argue though whether it's actually worth to pay the 2500 pounds to learn cloud computing but again you know having to to learn all of that in the university setting especially in oxford university you just feel different and this is also one of my subjects that can work as a buffer tank in case my other subjects did really badly. Software engineering mathematics. Math is always the prerequisite of all the software engineering subjects and no doubt this will be my first subjects I'll be taking this coming November as you can see on the schedule. As you already may aware as well this is kind of like code modules that not a lot of people have actually taken it because of math definitely but again this course is just purely math I do not have a lot of things to talk about it but it is mentioned that the student should have positive attitude towards formal mathematical rotations would be advantages. Enterprise architectures, if you are coming from an enterprise background, you would definitely come across this kind of role and name, enterprise architectures, solution architectures, etc. And these subjects actually geared toward these areas. These, these subjects is allowing the students to learn how to manage an enterprise IT process from a holistic view. If your personal goal is to become a CTO, or a chief architect in a really large organization, then this more, these subjects definitely for you. I'm considering taking this one as previously I have exposure to the Otoga architectures and also worked with various of large organizations. So I do have some ideas how different processes such as business, application, technical architectures comes to play and to assist that ever evolving business requirement. Quantum computing, this is not a joke or a reference from the series that you watch from Netflix. Quantum computing is one of the subjects that are available to pick for the MSc student in a software engineering course. I do not have any visibility what this course is actually about, but considering picking this one up and reading from the course page, it is actually related to Qiskit API that's delivered by IBM and possibly we're gonna do some quantum computing stuff in the IBM infrastructures. And it also apparently have a series of practical exercise that's hosted uh, that's required Jupyter notebook knowledge and bear in mind these subjects actually uh, require us to have python 3.7 knowledge as well by the way for anyone who watches this video i'll definitely encourage you guys to join our discord for these embassies where potentially we can share and discuss about this course and to help the people as well who actually potentially join us in the next cohort as there is not a lot of information available for this course in the internet. Security principle, this is the fundamental to security where it can unlock us to, to learn more about security theme subjects in this course. And I believe this is a chill module of subjects that can be used to tank average of the percentage, but it is also useful if I've worked or going to work in a cloud engineering environment as these are all require knowledge to be able to operate in a secure cloud environment. Things like MTIS, X509 certificates, encryption algorithms are all crucial to succeed in a for the current cloud engineering market. Likely I'll pick this one up, but depending on the subject, if this is actually practical or just pure theory based with exercise. Cloud security, these are vastly based on the concept that you have learned from the security principles. While I appreciate lots of people actually think that uh, this is all about ACLs or knuckles or security ports, well, it is actually not. I think there is actually way more than that, such as encryption of the traffic, encryption of you know AWS KMS key, how it works, and also to understand that how microservices connectivity works in general, so we can actually fortify the securities around the services. Lastly, threat analysis is also very important. It is kind of like the reporting, another report tools for the business, but if you can actually do a threat analysis around your organization, this is huge because you can need to determine the right security solutions for required services and potentially you know, getting the right budget to, to deploy that solution as well. Network security. Network security has been massively abstracted due to the rise of the cloud computing. Back in the days, people had to learn how to use switch, routers, or even tons of Cisco related hardware, you know, just to ensure the layer two or layer four networks are protected or fully configured. But nowadays, a lot of that is simplified, although 
that was the case, but still we kind of need to understand that what is SSL, what is TRS, what is radius, how do we make sure that the layer 2 can flow to layer 4 and then go into layer 7. And these are all really important network fundamentals. I'm considering to take this one up if I have any other modules to take, but it's really likely. People and security, pretty straightforward subjects, right? It's basically how you can protect your organization through trolls, scammings, hackings, anything related to a human behavior perspective. These subjects, I reckon, is another introduction to security, especially to how to protect against social engineering and how possible the impact that it would actually cause. It is probably one of those interesting subjects that students should pick as it is if their major is in the security. Other than that, I'm on the fence of this one. So yeah, that's the quick summary of what I'm going to pick for my software engineering course in Oxford University. If there's anything you would like to know, please feel free to DM me or join Discord. Leave the comment down below and I'll see you the next one then.